What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Today, Andrew and I are talking about the latest Whistlekick book, but don't worry. You should know by now, when we talk about a thing that we did, we also talk about a lot of other things as it relates to martial arts, so stick around. We're talking about 12 Months to Hell. Now, if you're new to the show, you can go to whistlekick.com, see all the things that Whistlekick does, because we do a bunch of stuff. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Why do we do what we do? To connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world. And if you appreciate that mission, if you want to support us in that mission, here are a few things you can do. You can go to whistlekick.com and buy something. There's all kinds of stuff over there. We're rolling out new apparel all the time. Maybe like this shirt. You can use the code podcast15, get yourself 15% off. You could also support our Patreon. We give exclusive behind the scenes content like who's coming up for interview episodes and a bunch more. Patreon.com slash whistlekick. But if you want the whole list, including exclusive discounts we don't share anywhere else, Fun photos, other behind-the-scenes stuff, completely free, whistlekick.com slash family. Okay, we don't link that anywhere. You got to go direct, but we make it worth your while. Yeah, I, know. I should find, I should dig up some more you old photos. Some more fo Those photos you had were really yeah. good. Uh, yeah. The last ones I put up of me were a trip and a half. Yeah. So am I missing anything in my notes? Uh, the, podca the podcast gets its own website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, separate page for each and every episode transcripts links if if you like the guests that we bring on go go check out their page okay and that's it there's the intro okay yeah so my hope for this one was that you would kind of more kind of like what we did for all in weekend yeah kind of more yeah because i know the behind the scenes on the book yeah you know you more about this really book don't. than probably anybody i we want to educate the rest fingers of the world. crossed that i do <laughs> If I don't, then um, I, I'm, I'm trying to balance for, for people watching. You know what? I'm I'm done trying to pretend that, that this is like an overly professionally produced show. I'm using a laptop half folded over here to put my notes. It's all good. So 12 Months to Health. Yeah. There are lots of self-help type books on how to, how to get healthy, right? There's yeah. tons of them. A stupid number. Yeah. I um, wouldn't even want to guess. No idea. What makes this book different from that? It's different because I wanted to make something that worked. In in what I've done with whistle kick, in what I did coaching CrossFit, in what I did coaching gymnastics, just I've I've been around gyms and health and fitness. I mean, I started working out at like 12. I appreciate what the human body can do. It's, it's fascinating. It's interesting. to me, And so I put a lot of time and effort into my own health and fitness, but not everybody does. And I used to think that you had to put a lot of time and effort into your health and fitness, that that was the only way. And that people who were not where they wanted to be just needed to make it a priority, just needed to put more time into it. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was until probably five years ago. And some things started popping up for me as I was getting older, things weren't as easy to do, right? Metabolism over time tends to get suppressed based on choices we make. And to shorten up what could be a very long tangent, I started to find some, I don't want to call them hacks or tricks, but some Things to focus on that if you prioritize those led to a lot of, of impact. The first one, and, and the only <clears throat> one that I want to give away, has to do with water. Mm -hmm. How many of us have heard, like, drink certain amounts of water, carry around a big jug, lots and lots of water, 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 water. And it's overwhelming, right? Half your, you know, half your body weight in ounces a day. Well, for a lot of us, that's a gallon of water. If, if you're someone who yeah. needs to shed a couple pounds, that could easily be a gallon of water. And if I tell someone who needs to get healthier, I want you to drink a gallon of water, and I want you to do this, and I want you to do that, it becomes daunting. It's it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. How many of us have <clears throat> the mental space to do a bunch of extra things? And I said, okay, what's a simple thing? 
And that came from bumping into an article that said, this is, I remember roughly the timeline on this. This is, this was the thing that opened the door because it was something I shared with my father. Mm. Uh, most people don't know my father was morbidly obese, like hundreds of pounds. And I found this study that said drinking a 16 ounces of water first thing in the morning increased your metabolism by 15% for a period of time. And I was like, it's a pretty good input versus output. The investment on that's pretty easy. Yeah. And over time, I started to find more of those things. And I went, okay. If the hard part here is that it's we're asking people to do too much, how do we phase them in? And I didn't know what the answer to that was. Gotcha. Yep. Until we started the two minute martial arts project. Oh, interesting. So now, connection there. Most people don't know about that because we ne we didn't put a ton into it. And it was a project. Shout out to Justin, uh, not Marshall Journal Justin, other Justin. Uh, and the premise was a lot of people say they don't have enough time. Okay. Can you find two minutes? So we came up with a year's worth of drills and, and eventually it'll become a book. But I said, okay, if you've got two minutes and you build a habit, what can you do with that habit? And that started to come into my language as 1%, right? Yeah. How do you get 1% better? If I'm going to go to class, I'm going to aim to get 1% better at a thing. Mm -hmm. And then if I stack that over time, now 1% better, even if you go to class, once a week, that's not really sustainable because you're, if you've been training long, you're not going to get 50% better in a year. Yeah. And actually with compound interest, right? That 1% is actually closer to like 78, I think percent. It's a, it's a, a large number, but anybody can bite off that 1%. Yeah. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So I said, okay. With a fork and knife. Well, Probably. I mean, it could be jerky, elephant jerky. That's possible. <laughs> There's a lot of ways to eat out elephant. The point being, you have to take small bites. Yep. Yep. Otherwise, it is, to use your word, daunting. daunting. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I will say, <coughs> excuse me, um, that is the word that I use for those types of books, that they, they expect those types of health books ask you to do this and this and this and this and this. And there's all these things, change your diet and do this type of exercise, but not this kind and all this other stuff. And it is, it can be overwhelming and daunting. Um, and it's been interesting. You know, my, my wife and I have started doing the, doing the book as we call it. And um, it has been an interesting shift in how we think about getting healthier because, at, you know, a peek, peek behind the curtain a little bit, each page is a couple of paragraphs. So a little bit about why, what you're doing, what Jeremy is asking you to do in this book, why it's better for you and the benefits of doing that. And it helps to re-solidify what it is we're doing and why. But they're, yeah. but they're small increments, which, which feels manageable. It, it really does. Right. When you look at most of the financially successful health and fitness programs these days, they all use a single word challenge, mm. 30 day challenge, yep. 20 day challenge, 21 day challenge, 60 day challenge. That implies it's hard. It is hard, but there's an end point. Mm. Yep. If you want to be healthy forever, you can't do a challenge that has an end point. Yeah. Now you can use those as a reset, like a detox, like a kickoff, like a, something to break a pattern. There's all kinds of use for that. But if you're trying to create sustainable habits, which I think are the key, because none of us got to where we are overnight. It doesn't matter what you're talking about. It didn't happen overnight. If we're talking about weight or blood sugar levels or being sedentary, it didn't happen with a switch. It took time. Mm -hmm. It takes time to go back the other direction. And I think one of the, the takeaways from this, I think, relating it to martial arts is how many people go into whether you're an instructor and a, a student comes in for their first class or you are a student going into your class for the first time and the instructor says okay we it's your first class we're going to work on this and this and this and this and this and you're going to learn this whole kata today and our form and then you're going to do this and we're going to do some sparring the student will run away 
because they leave feeling like, wow, look at all these things I'm terrible at. It's daunting. Exactly. And it becomes overwhelming and it becomes something that they don't want to do. And I think that's the trouble with many books on how to get healthy. It's the same sort of philosophy. That new student comes in, you give them one or two things to work on, and that's it. You don't want to overwhelm them. And I think that's the one of the huge benefits of this book is that it doesn't feel over. I mean, yes, it's a thick book. I'm going to pick it up. I, it, this is a hardback, hardcover book. It's a thick book. It doubles as a weapon. Right? But that'd be the end of the episode. <laughs> but it's it's fun. kind of like a day calendar. Like, you know, it says, you know, day two, day three, day four, you read each day. I, did you say that intentionally? Because I've shared this with a couple people. If it was inexpensive, you did know this. If it was inexpensive to make a day, like a word of the day calendar, that's what this would have been. Yeah. Because that really is more the format. Yep. And so my wife and I read it at night before we go to bed. We 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 sit, we lay there in bed and we go, okay, what's the next day? And we read the chapter. I mean, they're short. A C- couple paragraphs on what we're doing and why. We did an episode. This might have been early when you were around. On why people struggle with things that don't have an endpoint. No, you, you weren't part of that one? No. I don't remember where that episode was. But it came out of the conversation. And, and this is still a broad conversation. Why do so many people earn their black belt in a martial arts style mm-hmm. and then quit? Because we uh, we give them that as the end point goal. Yeah, because true. people struggle doing things that are daunting, that are mm-hmm. overwhelming, that don't end. Like attending two, three, five hours of martial arts classes every week. <gasps> okay. When we put this together, when, when Jenny and Lester and I were talking on the back end, like how we wanted to do this, I had the roots of a concept. And the concept was... I wanted to give people one simple thing per month that they could do. And then I wanted to spend 30 days beating them over the head. And that was really the language I used. Beating them over the head with reasons why that simple thing was worth doing. So with the example of water being the first chapter, anybody can drink a glass of water, right? Like this is not rocket science. Some of the things that as we get deeper into the book, are they're not unique and they're not controversial at all. Like these are all very easy, obvious things. Or I should say simple, not easy. And then, okay, so let's pretend you are struggling to create this habit. We all know the power of habit. We all know that it is much easier to keep brushing your teeth because you've always been brushing your teeth as compared to starting flossing. Mm -hmm. Most people struggle flossing. Who doesn't struggle with flossing? People who've always flossed. People who floss consistently rarely stop flossing. Okay, And there's all kinds of science out there, or I should say research into how long it takes to create a habit. A lot of people identify 21 days. That is not a hard and fast rule. It depends on a number of factors. Mm -hmm. But roughly a month is a good amount of time. Yeah. So you read the thing. What's the thing we're going to have you do? And then you spend the next month reading one page at a time, giving you yet another reason why doing this thing is beneficial to you. Drink more water because it helps you eat less through the day. Drink more water because it's better for your skin. Drink more water because, 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 because. And I expect there are one or a, one of two reactions from people as they read through those. They find one that really resonates for them. They're like, oh, I've been trying to make an improvement on this symptom. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm going to keep going with this. Or just the sheer volume of why wouldn't I do this? Why wouldn't I start my day with a glass of water? It's free. Yep. I have to do it anyway. Like, I don't think that anybody out there who rejects water as being beneficial. If, if you do, you're probably not watching the show because you're crazy. <laughs> um, and you get through the chapter and you're like, all right. That, and so 30 days yeah, later, just what been, I'm going to do. You've been doing it and you're probably going to keep doing it. And then we give you another simple, manageable thing. My wife and I, as I mentioned, we read this at, at the end of the night and so far, we and we started because we were nerds. We're like, we're going to start on January 1st because that's day one, right? Sure. A bunch of people did. Yeah. And, you know, so we're on day 21, 22, or whatever we are right now as recording this, 25, I guess. Um, and for the month, we've been doing this glass of water every morning. And at, in the evening, we read the page. And nine times out of ten, she will go, I already knew that. 
And she's like, why are, why are we going through these things every single day? I already know all these things. And one of the, the concepts and ideas I brought up to her is, you know, one of the reasons that we're doing this is that, especially for us, we're doing it at night, is it helps to helps us to remember when we wake up, first wake up, mm-hmm. boom, water. Because that was the last thing we thought of when we went to bed. And it helps us to remember that this is what we're going to do. And now it's not something we have to think about because it's been, you know, 25 days now. Uh, it's just you wake up, you drink a glass of water, and then you go about your day. And, and I, I want to poke at that reaction that, you know, I already know these things. Good. But I would caveat that with sure. She will say sometimes it wouldn't, it won't be a, I already knew that. It would be, oh, that makes sense. And my response is, yes, that makes sense, but it's not something that I thought of. It does make sense that having more water in your body helps your joints and your ligaments because they're lubed up, for lack of a better word. That does make sense. Synovial fluids based in water. Is that something I ever thought of before? Nope. Let's flip it. What if it was the other way? What if it was the type of book that everybody puts out there about health and fitness and exercise Mm. and whatever that throws a bunch of things at you you didn't know now you have to exert energy thinking about it remembering it mm. processing it yep and buying in to what they're saying yep, yep. These, everything in there came from a scientific study everything that is here has was was referenced um for those of you who don't know they're, they're the book team is three of us it's it's jenny it's myself and it's lester and lester does the research Lester has done tremendous research and and we work together on martial arts handbook. And when I gave him this, I I said, you know, what I'm looking for, here are the things. Can you help me with the research? And he's pulling studies from all over the world on these things like here. And some of the stuff in here, you'll get to stuff later on. It's like, oh, oh, I didn't know that could do that. Oh, I did. Oh, okay. Oh, and some of them are going to make sense. Oh, that makes sense. Others are going to be a little more like, Okay, I can see that. But as you get deeper into the book and you start seeing some results, which guess what? They're not going to be rapid. You're not going to start drinking a glass of water in the morning. And on day three, you're like, I feel amazing. Maybe you will if you were really dehydrated. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the idea is that at some point halfway through the book, something happens and you go, hey, don't my, my knees usually hurt after I go for a hike? Hmm. Or when I play with my grandkids, I feel sore getting down on the floor and I yep. don't know, right? It's it's meant to be to create a light bulb moment. Yeah, yeah. And one of the other things that I find interesting is if there is a page that you talk about a specific thing, for example, we'll use the water and the joints. If I read that and say, yeah, I don't, I don't buy that. I don't think that makes sense. You have a little footnote that says go to the appendix and go to the back of the book and it will link. I mean, not link. You can't push in the book, <laughs> but but <laughs> there will be a website that you can go to where the study has been done to show that this is the case. Um, and I think that's really cool. Um, you know, like I said, for the water stuff, most of the stuff, it makes sense, you know, totally does. But I could see further on in the book where we get into some other thing. And I don't know what those things are because I haven't read there yet. Right. Where I might go, hmm, really? Is that true? I mean, I believe Jeremy because I know him and I trust him. But I want to find out more about that. I have the ability to do that. That I can go and read the, the study or the research that was done on whatever it is. Right. And I think that's pretty good. The, the, the other thing and last thing I'll say is my my father plays bagpipes. <laughs> I, you, I was somehow going I, I didn't know that. Yeah. But that is the least surprising thing I've yeah. probably heard about you. And he went to a week long workshop a number of years ago. Um, it was down in Florida. And he was excited to tell me about that he was going to be going to this workshop. And I knew some of the instructors, and they were, you know, some top level players. And I was like, oh, that'll be great, Dad. You'll get a lot out of it. And he spent the week there, and he got done the week and said, it was the worst week I've ever spent in my life. Like I didn't learn anything. I, it was just such a waste of time. I'm never going back. And I'm going to send them an, an e- you know, email about it and blah, 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 blah. And about three or four months later, he said to me, so that workshop I went to 
a number of months ago, they, they opened up the registrations and I'm going to go next year. And I was like, why? why? Like you told me. Yeah. It was so. And he said, you know, ever since then, something will come up at band practice and I'll be like, oh, and this was him talking. He said, I, I would be like, oh yeah, they mentioned something about that at the workshop. I do remember. Oh, okay. That makes a little more sense now. And then another month or two would go by and he would say, oh yeah, you know what? I used to struggle with this and it's not, I, I get it now. Why do I get it now? Oh, it's because I learned a little bit about it at that workshop and I didn't realize it at the time. And being able to have that long-term, being able to look back at something and say, oh, mm -hmm. I really did get something out of that. Um, you know, my wife and I are on day 25. Do we notice a huge difference in our lives right now? Not really. Have there been a few things that have made me go, I wonder? Yeah. Cool. Can I attribute it to the water? Maybe. Maybe not. No, because it's, it's not a, a you know, a, a tightly controlled study. Exactly. Exactly. But it's not meant to be. Because how much does drinking that glass of water in the morning put you out? 15 seconds. Like, it's it's not a big deal. Yeah. Now, let's tie this. There's there's one more thing I'm going to say as we as we wind down. But let's tie this back into martial arts now. We, we've kind of hinted at that. And most of you watching or listening can probably relate everything we're saying to martial arts. You can see that I, I, as with everything else we do, there's a martial arts approach to not only the way the book was made, but the way it is, the information is presented. We often, as students or newer instructors, try to do what you talked about with the first, you know, that, that example of a student on their first day. Mm -hmm. We are so passionate that we are looking to do everything at once. Uh, I've heard from a number, I, I get emails all the time, and one of the recurring themes is, I'm a blue belt, I'm a green belt, you know, two, three years in, and I love my training, and I wanna add, I wanna train in this, I wanna train in this, I wanna train in this. My school offers classes in this, 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 and this, and I'm gonna do them all. Mm. And sadly, even those people who are training for the right reasons, maybe even at a great school and it fits in with their life, become overwhelmed at their own choices. Yeah. Yep. And they pull back and they look for something more sustainable. Now, the irony is, maybe not irony, but what I'm finding interesting is I have, in the last few months, made some adjustments to how I handle my work. Hmm. I am less overwhelmed. I'm getting better quality work done which means I'm getting more work done mm -hmm. by not trying to do so much all at once. Makes sense. One of the things that I'm most proud of is I took the draft of this and reached out to a bunch of my friends who work in traditional and, you know, some Western, some Eastern medicine. As you might imagine, as someone who is passionate about health and fitness, I've accumulated <laughs> quite a few health practitioners who sure. have done stuff. Yep. for me over the years you know they have been part of my team i've got a pretty deep team not as deep as it has been but because i'm not you know i'm not going as hard on my body as i have been but i reached out to a number of them uh in here there are forwards i, I think we can call them endorsements because they read the book and decided to contribute from an md <clears throat> uh, actually a chief medical officer mm -hmm. at a hospital an acupuncturist chinese med medicine practitioner a chiropractor and a occupational therapist slash rolfer, which if you don't know rolfing stru structural integration, similar to massage, but works on a fascial level. So here are four people from really different angles yeah. on health and they all get it. They understand it. Some of them <clears throat> talk about it. They're like, my patients need this yeah. because what you're asking people to do is simple and easy. The reason, do I want to say this? We have a culture in Western medicine that results should come quickly. Mm -hmm. That your health, I'm going to take this pill, it's going to solve my problem. I'm going to have this surgery, I'm going to solve my problem. That is not to say that pharmaceutical interventions and surgeries do not have a place. Sure, absolutely. <clears throat> but I have a saying that I've said for a long time, nobody's going to care more about you or an aspect of you than you. Nobody's going to care more about your health. 
So it is my hope after hearing this, you will consider checking this out. It's available paperback, hardcover, Kindle. Uh, we have a Facebook group. Jenny would, would slap me if I didn't mention that. The 12 Hours <laughs> to Health Facebook group. A um, bit of mutual support behind the scenes, you know, kind of thing. You know, Because creating habits is the secret to everything. Small things done frequently lead to big results. Whether you're management. eating an elephant, yep. training in martial arts, trying to get healthier, whatever it is. If people have questions, I will happily answer them. Go check out the reviews. People are finding some substantial results. I am not promising any result because I cannot do that. But there are people who have written in, you mentioned your experience. There have been a couple things. You're like, mm. I have received direct feedback from people. And I'm not going to say what the feedback has been because that starts to get into claims. And mm. you can't do that. Yep. But saying, I am in, I'm two weeks in or three weeks in to the first month just changing drinking water. And here are the so here are the things I've noticed that are different. That person's hooked now. That person's going to go through the whole book. And they're going to get through 12 months. And they're going to go, what? Mm -hmm. yep. And we're probably going to evaluate <laughs> six months in. Do we do a second one? I don't know. I've got most of the next 12 already in my head. I've already figured those out. Yeah. But we have to see. It, and it's great that it's available on so many platforms. The only one where you're probably not going to do is audiobook. I thought about it. Because, I, just, I don't because know how it's to like, do it. Let me listen to 10 minutes. Okay, let me stop. It's not even 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it would be pretty quick. Those, those paragraphs, you know, chapter 42, <laughs> you know, for day 42. And I read you a couple things. Two minutes. Chapter 43. Wait, stop, stop. And, you know, you're driving in the yeah. car. It's not going to work. It's it really not going to work well. Awesome. Well, I hope people check the book out. Um, uh, you know, I... I'm looking forward to continuing on with it and seeing what the 12 months of 2022 will bring. Martial arts, what we learned from martial arts, martial arts philosophy, approach, etc. This is this is why I say martial arts makes people better. If it was not for martial arts, the experiences I've had doing other things directly related and within the bounds of, of martial arts and whistle kick, this book would not exist. Martial arts opened my mind up in a way that I could do this. And I'm sure that there are a multitude of things out there that we owe to martial arts and to martial arts training. Absolutely. Available on Amazon. <laughs> we were joking when we set this up, like with, with the team. Andrew, Andrew made, um, can you see it? it's orange, this, this um, Thai sweet tea, which is really good. And I felt like we were having like a, a daytime talk show. And I was going to do a different voice today on Whiskey. martial arts radio. <laughs> Jeremy Lesniak talks to us about his new book, <laughs> right? Like, I don't know. Is that, is that the right? Yeah, that sounds good. I don't know. I don't listen to it. It, it's, talk shows. it sounds sedated. It sounds like, I'm yeah. also. excellent. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Whether you pick up the book or not, hopefully you got something out of this episode. Um, okay. Outro whistlekick.com. Podcast 15 to save money on stuff. Not this book because Amazon does things weirdly. We'll leave it at that. Whistlekickmartialartsradio.com for the show, all the episodes that we do. Oh, you can get this shirt at whistlekick.com. Um, you can't get this shirt. You cannot because that was the free training day shirt and limited we'll have, edition. We'll have a different design for 2022. Uh, if you want the entire list of all the things that we give to you or that you could do in support of the Whistlekick mission to connect, educate, and entertain, whistlekick.com slash family. Did I say Patreon? Patreon.com slash whistlekick yep. for behind the scenes and exclusive content you will not find anywhere else. I did that. Seminars. If you want me to come to your school, teach a seminar. We are still booking and it's going really well. So I don't expect this to end in 2022. If you're watching in 2024, I'm probably still teaching seminars. <laughs> It'll be on some slightly different subject matter at that point, but I'm really having a good time. I would love to come to your school and work with you, your students on stuff. So reach out, Jeremy at whistlekick.com, Andrew at whistlekick, martial arts radio.com or social media is at whistlekick. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great day. day.